big thank you to fellow YouTuber Andy Rogerson, or EV Man as he's commonly known, who asked for this video. He keeps getting comments asking how heat pumps actually work, especially below zero degrees, and how on earth they can be above 100% efficiency. To start, let's take a look exactly how heat pumps work. A basic monoblock heat pump system consists of six components. A compressor, an expansion valve, a fan, a heat exchanger, internal radiators, and an external radiator all connected by pipework that's filled with refrigerant. That's a liquid that has a low temperature boiling point. When this refrigerant is warm, it's in a vapor state. Basically, it's a gas. And when it's cooled, it turns back into a liquid. When a heat pump's turned on, the compressor starts first. Held back by the expansion valve, this increases the pressure on one half of the system and decreases the pressure of the refrigerant on the other side of the system. Compressing this gas causes the molecules to cram in tightly together, collide with each other, and instantly heat up. Imagine a deodorant can. When you release the deodorant, you can feel it physically cools in your hand. If you were to force that gas back in, it would warm back up. This heats the plate heat exchanger, which transfers the heat into the water, which we pump around our radiators. As the water circulates the radiators, it returns back cooler, which cools down this plate and condenses that refrigerant back into a liquid. The refrigerant then passes through the expansion valve and decompresses. As it does so, it drops below the temperature of the outside air. This now very cold, low pressure liquid goes through an outside radiator to collect heat from the air outside with the help of a fan. It warms up, boils, becomes a gas again, and is sent right back to the compressor. This is all boosted by the use of latent heat and phase change. Any liquid that turns into gas absorbs what's known as latent energy. That's energy being absorbed without temperature change. And any gas that turns back into a liquid releases that energy as heat and heats things up without itself cooling down. This latent energy theory is the exact same principle that increases boiler efficiency by creating condensing when you turn down your boiler flow temperature and the principle that phase change heat batteries use. So it's the outside air that we get our thermal energy from and the electricity a heat pump uses simply enables us to move that heat from the air outside and concentrate it into our radiators. The heat energy doesn't come from the electricity, it comes from the air. Now there are other versions of heat pumps such as air to air, ground source and water source, but they all use the exact same basic principle. So heat pumps can be more than 100% efficient, well, what are we actually measuring? With gas boilers, we measure how much gas we put in, let's say one kilowatt hour's worth, and measure how much heat we get out, say 0.9 kilowatt hour's worth. This would give us 90% efficiency. If we do the same with heat pumps and measure the electricity put in as one kilowatt hour and measure the heat out as five kilowatt hours, we will have 500% efficiency. Let me explain. To transform the energy in gas to heat, we burn it. Take one kilowatt hours of gas, set it on fire and release 0.9 kilowatt hours of heat. The missing 0.1 kilowatt hours is released in water vapor as uncaptured latent energy. Importantly though, you pay for the power used, not the heat gained. So unlike a gas boiler, the actual source of energy for a heat pump is the air outside, not its electrical input. If you did just measure the energy extracted from the outside air, you would have 100% efficiency. If you include the electricity used to achieve that, you would get down to around 66 to 80% efficiency. So what is efficiency? The efficiency of a machine or machine efficiency indicates how well its input energy is converted into useful output energy or work done. It's the output divided by the input expressed as a percentage. Now we don't pay for the abundantly warm air that's heated by the sun outside. We pay for electricity. So using the same measuring method as gas boilers and only measuring the power you pay for and not the heat gained, if one kilowatt hour of electricity gives five kilowatt hours of heat, the heat pump is 500% efficient. This is usually termed as the coefficient of performance or COP and a 500% efficiency would be a copper five. However, the efficiency in one point of time 
is a pretty unfair marker, as it changes continuously throughout the day and year. For example, if we were at a copper 5 when it's, say, 12 degrees Celsius outside, say, for example, we're creating 5 kilowatt hours of heat for 1 kilowatt hour of electricity to keep your house warm, when it's zero outside, you may require 10 kilowatt hours to keep the house warm, and you might consume 3 kilowatt hours of electricity. This would give us a lower COP of 3.3, or 330% efficiency. This varies because the source and sink, that's the outside air where we source our heat from, and radiator temperature where we emit that heat, are further apart in temperature. The further apart these are, the harder the compressor needs to work to create a wider pressure differential between the high and low pressure sides of the heat pump, which gives a wider temperature differential and drives the radiator temperature up. We can make this work less hard by putting in larger radiators, so the radiators don't have to be as hot to heat the property, and or use weather compensation. So now we know why it varies, we need to count for that in our heat pump efficiency. When we talk about how efficient heat pumps are, rather than talk about its COP, we normally refer to its SCOP, or SPF. The SCOP, or Seasonal Coefficient of Performance, is the estimation of the average COP over the whole year. The SPF, or Specific Performance Factor, is the actual on-site measurement. Now, you may be concerned that SPF or SCOP might not be a fair measurement of efficiency, as the average efficiency throughout the year does not represent where most heat is generated in the winter. However, as they represent the total kilowatt hours of heat, created over the whole year, divided by the total kilowatt hours of electricity consumed in the same period, and the heat pump has to create more heat in the winter when it's less efficient, the SCOP and SPF are weighted towards the winter efficiencies. Because of this, you can get an accurate understanding of your heat pump's annual running costs, even before insulation, regardless of winter efficiency. Hey Adam, what about when it's minus three outside? Heat pumps won't work then. Well, actually, Producer Harrison, who should know better, you're wrong. We're often asked how heat pumps could possibly work when it's below zero degrees, and hear that we're much better off with boilers. In reality, they work just fine when it's a negative temperature outside, provided it's properly designed and installed. When it's zero degrees or below outside, the air does have heat energy in it. Zero degrees is simply the freezing point of water. There's still plenty of energy in the air. The real zero degrees, also known as absolute zero, is at minus 273 degrees Celsius. So unless you're living down at those temperatures, there's probably a heat pump somewhere for you. Typical heat pumps are designed to work down to minus 20 degrees Celsius and can get your property up to temperature with no problems at all, again, provided it's designed and installed properly. If you do hear issues with people struggling to heat properties with heat pumps when it's cold outside, that's simply because the lower temperatures show up any design, installation and commissioning flaws. If your COP dips down to, say, 2.8 when it's minus one outside, that's still a 280% efficiency with your electricity. A modern condensing boiler may be only 88% efficient in that scenario. So yes, heat pumps aren't as efficient in the depths of winter, but they're still often three times more efficient than a boiler. Of course, electricity, at least currently, is more expensive than gas. So to work out if that would result in annual cost savings for you, simply watch our boilers versus heat pumps running cost video. Okay guys, if this is your kind of content, make sure you click the little notification bell icon. That'll let you know each time one of our videos are out. And if you can't see that, you'll also have to hit subscribe and click the like button whilst you're there. See you in the next one.